If we can talk about, Dave, um, amorphous uh, design now. I mean, obviously the industry is, is increasingly looking at amorphous forms to uh, drive uh, solubility and bioavailability. Bio so um, do you think when it comes to amorphous forms that we will reach uh, anything towards perfection in, in this pursuit? And do you have any advice on how to really drive amorphous forms forward? I, I think um, aligned to the answer to the last question about sort of um, you know intelligent formulation design uh, and the formulation approaches to um, to B type compounds and I talked about solid solutions and solid dispersions. Well, obviously uh, amorphicity plays a key role in in those formulation strategies. Mm. Um, I think the industry has probably. Um, been a little bit leery about embracing uh, amorphous dosage forms. And probably the key reason for that was um, ritonavir in the late 90s, which was uh, a, an Abbott product, uh, a, an antiviral. And they had a, um, a product which had, they'd manufactured around about 240 batches. Uh, and then all of a sudden, uh, their amorphous dosage form started to crystallize and they couldn't manufacture it any longer and had to be withdrawn from the market. Now, Abbott, to their credit, successfully reformulated it and relaunched the product. But I think it had um, a very negative impact on the rest of the industry mm. and um, key opinion leaders within the industry said, well, you know, why do we really want to sort of put ourselves in that position? Um, I think over the last 10 years, we've seen uh, a huge increase in the knowledge base.